Good morning, church. Welcome to worship at Bloomington Wesley United Methodist. I'm Pastor Sarah Isbell, and I am so pleased that you've joined us. Today is Sunday, May 10th, Mother's Day, for so many families. Mother's Day was actually started by a Methodist, Anna Jarvis, in honor of her mother. And the first Mother's Day celebration was held at a Methodist church in 1908. Today, the United Methodist Church acknowledges that both Mother's Day and Father's Day can be days of great joy and gratitude for some, but of great sorrow and emptiness for others. And so this morning, we celebrate what has come to be known in Methodism as the Festival of the Christian Home, a celebration of families of all forms, and an acknowledgement that wherever God's children live, their God is among them. Some of our Wesley families will be helping out with this morning's service, and we thank them in advance for their help. We invite you and your family, whoever you identify as your family, to participate with us as we worship. You may want to download the bulletin PDF that's attached to this video so that everybody has the words, the responses, and the announcements for the week. We hope that this morning you will experience the presence of a loving Father, Mother, God, wherever you are this morning. And again, thank you for joining us here at Wesley. If you'd like to know more about Wesley United Methodist Church, please visit our website at wwwwesley umc Dot com. And now, friends, let us turn our hearts and our minds toward worship.
And now we invite you to join with our Wesley families in this morning's responsive call to worship. For those times of ample joy, Lord, we give our thanks. For those times grief abounds, Lord, come near. For those times we are surrounded by community, Lord, we give our thanks. For those times we are alone, Lord, come near. For those times we have plenty, Lord, we give our thanks. For those times of scarcity, Lord, come near. For those times of health and wholeness, Lord, we give our thanks. For those times we are less than well, Lord, come near. For those whose gift is service, Lord, we give our thanks. For those who need you now, Lord, come near. For this time together in worship, Lord, we give our thanks. For your world this day, our prayer, Lord, come near. And if you join us now for this morning's opening hymn, Happy the Home When God is There. of our homes today for it is you the one we have come to know as a heavenly parent that we want to be near this hour and every hour we are your many children and together with our brother jesus christ we will offer our lives and service to your world fill us during this hour with the inspiration we need to serve all your people in christ's name we pray amen Good morning, my church. I wanted to play a couple of hymns for you. Since this crisis, these hymns have come to mean a lot to me. Essentially, I'm playing right from our church hymnal.
I'm here in my living room getting ready for church to start. It's my favorite time of the week. I hope you guys look forward to it too, but I can't wait till we're all back at church and we get to see each other and give each other hugs and do church the way we normally do. That's going to be so much fun. I sent you something this week. I sent you a bingo card. It looks a little bit like this, but some of them looked a little bit different too because um, I don't know who you're, who you're at home with this week. Today's Mother's Day, but I think it's a great day, too, to celebrate dads and grandmas and any of the people that are at home with us in this time, because all of those people are so important to us. On this bingo card, there's a bunch of different things you could do with whoever you're with, like smile at them, tell them what Pastor Justin talks about, play a game with them after worship. Some great ideas. I want you to take a picture or a video of yourself doing one of those things with whoever you're with today. And we're gonna have kind of like a contest. I wish all of you could win, but I only have one of these. This is something I had at church that I was hoping to use with you this past couple weeks. And it's called, it's kind of a super secret surprise. It's called a chocolate egg surprise maker. It's kind of cool, maybe you've seen those things in the store where there's something inside of a chocolate egg and then you wrap it in special foil. Well, this is a maker so that you could make one. You could put whatever you want, like maybe a gummy bear inside of this chocolate and then wrap it in this fancy foil and hide it somewhere in your house and they could find it and then they can make another one. Pretty cool. So you could do that over and over again. But I, I just have one, so I'm gonna send one to whoever Mr. Gary and I think is the coolest video or the coolest picture of you doing stuff with your family. Thank you, I can't wait to see you guys, let's pray. Thank you God, for this time that we have with our families. Lord, would you help us to get ready for when we're gonna be back at church? We can't wait and we're so excited. And we love you and we love our family. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Bye guys.
won't you join me this morning as we take some time to center our hearts and spend some time in prayer with God. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood in righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. firm foundation we find in your son Jesus Christ and the freedom we find in your grace. In times of uncertainty and shakiness that we find ourselves in, we find peace in knowing you cannot be shaken. Lord, we pray this morning for those who feel they don't have solid ground to stand on right now. Help us to recognize those in need of stability and embolden us to provide that support in any way we can. For we know that when we build our own foundations on the cornerstone of Christ, how much more effective we are to support those who find themselves in sinking sand. God, continue to guide us in your truth and love as we continue to build our relationships, our homes, and our lives upon the solid rock of your Son, Jesus Christ, our cornerstone, and the one who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then Trust in his righteousness alone Father, stand before the throne Christ alone, cornerstone Weak made strong in the Savior's love
Good morning, church. As Pastor Sarah already mentioned, today is Festival of the Christian Home and United Methodist Churches all over the world, but particularly it's celebrated here in the United States. What an important festival it is to celebrating the most essential and base level gathering of believers. Of course, it's also Mother's Day, and I would be remiss if I didn't say Happy Mother's Day to all the moms who are joining us for today's service. We hope you are blessed with some FaceTime, even if it's just virtual FaceTime with your kids today. I should also say Happy Mother's Day to my own mom. So, Mom, Happy Mother's Day. Thank you for all you've done throughout my life to support and love me. John, Kimberly, and I are so blessed to have you in our lives. With it being Festival of the Christian Home, we thought it was important to feature various families throughout our service today, some of whom you've already encountered. Isn't it wonderful how God has knit together people from various backgrounds into all kinds of families? No matter who you consider your family, whether blood relative or not, we hope you've also felt at home with us in today's worship service. After all, we're just one great big human family. And we're glad that you are here with us today. Now, I'd like to introduce you to another of the families that are helping us with today's worship service. This is the Lutz family. Craig, Kelsey, Davis, and Andy bring us this morning's scripture reading, which comes to us from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. They'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that, the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you were, had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Thank you, Lutz family. I am particularly grateful for the inclusion of all the ducks in this morning's service, Andy. Well said. There's this great book that came out in 2012. You may have heard of it. It's called Wonder, and it's by author R.J. Palacio. In this story, the main character, Augie Pullman, goes to his first day of fifth grade at a new school. While this might be a bit nerve-wracking for any young student, it's even more so for Augie. You see, Augie was born with a facial difference that makes him look pretty unique. In fact, it's the reason Augie is attending mainstream school for the first time in his life. During Augie's English class, Mr. Brown, his new teacher, gives the class a new word to learn, precept. Mr. Brown goes on to explain that precepts are those rules about really important things. Of course, he then asks the students to give example of some really important things in their lives. And while they come up with several good examples, like rules, schoolwork, family, even sharks, none of them mention the most important thing. So Mr. Brown suggests to them that learning who you are is what you're here to do. I won't go on to spoil the book for you, but it's a great story about being okay with who you are and honoring others for who they are. I encourage you to find a copy and to give it a read sometime. People, I think Mr. Brown might be onto something, something that the Apostle Peter also felt was important. You see, Peter too felt it was essential for every believer to learn who they are, or perhaps more accurately, whose they are. In today's scripture passage, Peter begins by describing the nourishment that believers require to grow in their faith as pure spiritual milk. What an appropriate image for the things that feed the soul. 
Just as a baby starts life requiring the most basic of nutrients to grow strong, so too we require the most essential of spiritual practices to grow strong in our faith. Things like Bible study, prayer, and meeting together in small groups and for worship are essential to the development of a healthy Christian. Now I know, it's hard to even process that last sentence in times like these. What do we do when the world turns upside down and everything, including churches, shuts their doors? I asked Kendra, our director of communications, to share with me the photo that we took of our congregation during our 75th anniversary worship service this past November. Do you remember the photo that I'm talking about? The one in which everyone turned around in their pews and faced the balcony at the back of the sanctuary? Well, here it is for the big reveal in three, two, one. I'll leave it here for a few seconds so you can pause the video to find you and your family. It's incredible to think that not all that long ago, we were all together in worship. Oh, how I long for that day again. Of course, COVID-19 has made it impossible for the church to gather in person, at least for now. But does that keep us from still being the church? Should it keep us from being the church? Of course not. And I don't think it has. If I've said it once, I've probably said it a dozen or more times. I am so encouraged by the way Wesley Church has continued to be the church during coronavirus. It's been incredible to watch you adapt and continue to find ways to be nourished and to nourish others during this outbreak. While we've been quarantined for almost two months now, we found ways to continue growing and nurturing faith. It's amazing to me just how resourceful the church can be when it's forced to adapt to a new situation. It kind of reminds me of a YouTube video I watched a few weeks ago about the renovations that are being done on Big Ben, that big clock tower in London. In 2017, a four-year, multi-million pound renovation was started, and it has kept the tower behind a very large system of scaffolding ever since. During the renovations, stonemasons discovered that numerous ornamental fixtures on the exterior of the building have started to deteriorate over time. In an effort to repair these fixtures, matching stone needed to be found. But because the exact quarry from which the building's exterior was built no longer exists, workers are having to patch in slightly different colored stone from another similar quarry. Much like our current church reality, it's not exactly what once was, but still something quite beautiful. I can't help but think that we too are like these varied stones, unique in so many ways, but brought together by a master designer to create something pretty grand. Peter likes a good stone metaphor too. In today's scripture, he quickly adjusts his metaphor from one about newborns drinking milk to one about construction stones. Peter says that Jesus is like a living cornerstone, the starting point and main support for the incredible spiritual house that God is constructing out of the various other living stones that he has scattered all over the world. That's you and me. While some reject the teachings of Christ our brother, we who believe have chosen a different path. We seek to be united with him so that the world might be transformed by the message he has given us to share. In fact, when we stones are brought together, we make up one incredible structure that the world just can't miss as it drives by. Church, I'm not talking about our building at 502 East Front Street. No, I'm talking about the structure that can be seen in the bonds that we share. I'm talking about the relationships that exist between siblings in Christ. I'm talking about the church universal, that is the abode that has become known as the body of Christ. We are that body. We are the church. Whether we are in a sanctuary worshiping in person or we're confined to our separate homes, you and me together with other believers the world over, we are the church. And it is our role to be the family of God for the world. Peter closes this morning's scripture with this charge. You are a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, 
in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Brothers and sisters, Christ our Lord is first and foremost our brother. The love he showed to us in his death and resurrection, it was quite simply the sincerest adoption offer the world has ever known. It was God's offer that anyone and everyone, regardless of where they come from or what they've done, would have a forever family. I don't know about you, but I find sincerity and security in that offer. I am blessed to have come from a good earthly home. But how incredible that God himself wants to invite me into his rock-solid home. You too are invited into this family. Some of you have already made a commitment to being a part of God's forever family. I am so glad that we get to be siblings in Christ. But if you find yourself wondering today what it's like to be a part of this family, maybe just wanting to talk to someone about questions you have about Christianity or being a follower of Jesus, I invite you to reach out today by calling the number in the description box below. You want to leave a voicemail with your name and phone number, but either Pastor Sarah or myself will personally return your phone call within 24 hours. We would love the opportunity to hear what you have to say, what questions you might have, and to share with you what we've come to know in the time that we've been a part of God's family. Please do reach out if you feel so led to do so today. We'd love to hear from you. Now I have a, a family activity for us to participate in this week. I want to invite you to go on a walk with your immediate family members sometime during the next several days. And during the walk, I encourage you to take some time to pray together. Maybe you'll thank our Heavenly Father for creating the weather you'll be enjoying. Or perhaps you'll spend some time asking for God's tender, more motherly side to enter into your household. Have relationships become a little tense with all this time you've been spending together lately? Or maybe you'll just want to spend some time sharing your thoughts and feelings with our brother Jesus. Whatever you do, I invite you to encourage your family members as they pray. It's not always the easiest to pray out loud, and sometimes it can feel odd when we pray with members of our own families. But I assure you that when a generous spirit abounds and an environment of encouragement is fostered, praying together is one of the most bonding experiences that a family can have together. Your prayer walks don't have to be long, nor do your prayers have to be eloquent. Just open your heart and spend some time building your relationships with God and with each other. Finally, as you walk, have everyone in your household find a rock that suits them and take those rocks home with you. After giving them a good scrubbing down with soap and water, put the rocks somewhere prominent in your home. Maybe in the middle of your dinner table or on your coffee table near the remote controls or even on each family member's nightstand. My prayer for you this week and in the weeks and months ahead is that these rocks will become a lasting reminder of who you are and who you belong to. Every time you see these rocks, remember that God loves you so much and that you will always have a place in his home. Happy Festival of the Christian Home Church. God bless you this week as you walk and pray together. At this time in the service, we are privileged to take part in the work of God by sharing what we have with others. Your weekly offering helps support the ministries we offer to families and children here at Wesley, like the Family Zoom Talent Show last weekend, or the coloring pages Miss Kathy sends to our kids to keep their spiritual energies flowing during the time that they're stuck at home. If you would like to connect with Ms. Kathy about Wesley's ministry with families during COVID-19, shoot her an email at connect at wesley-umc.com. Or if you're curious about our children and family ministries during a normal season, check out our website, www.wesley-umc.com. And while you're there, check out the tab that says give. Your offerings and your generosity make such a difference. We're so grateful for your ongoing faithfulness. I invite you to pray with me now. O oh God, our Heavenly Father and Mother, thank you for the gift of relationship, the gift of family. Help us to treasure the families we've been given. 
and to give to families you treasure. Where we've been given enough to share, grant us open hands and generous hearts. When we find ourselves in need, may we call on our church family in the knowledge and assurance that here we are loved and accepted. Bless the gifts we give this day, that through them others will come to know you as their loving parent. Amen. you join me in our closing song in Christ alone.
we're so glad you joined us for worship this week. We hope that you and your family have been blessed. If you're watching with us on YouTube or Facebook, we invite you to like this video or subscribe to our channel. Let us know you're out there. We know that we're reaching children of God that we never even met before the pandemic, and we would love to get to know you better. Reach out to us via email at connect at wesley-umc.com and let us know how you're doing and if there are ways that we can serve you during this difficult time. On our website, www.wesley-umc.com, you'll find opportunities to get connected through worship, prayer, daily devotions, small group study, and volunteering. One of those volunteer opportunities is coming up next weekend, our Wesley Paper Distribution Ministry. We'll be giving away toilet paper, paper towels, diapers, wipes, and more this coming Saturday, May 16th, from 9 to 11 a.m. If you or someone you know is in need of these items, please pull up to our drive through at Wesley West, and we will do what you can to get you what you need. And if you're able to help or to give, please sign up by going to our website and reaching out to Karen Dodlin. Donations of diapers and wipes are particularly appreciated right now and can be dropped off at Wesley West any afternoon this week. Cash donations help us purchase the items we need. You can make your gift at our website or by mailing your check to the church, 502 East Front Street, Bloomington, Illinois, 61701. In other news, Wesley is offering a new small group study right now based on Adam Hamilton's new book, Hope. The study, Hope at the End of Your Rope, includes a video that you can watch on your own time and a Zoom group that meets for discussion on Thursdays at 2 p.m. Contact our Director of Discipleship and Children and Family Ministries, Kathy Pritz, at kpritz at wesley-umc.com for more information. Receive now this benediction, mothers and fathers, and sisters and brothers and siblings in Christ. Go into this week full of gratitude for what you've received and full of hope for what is yet to come. Live as beloved children of the God who is our Heavenly Mother and Heavenly Father and our eternal friend. Live as siblings in Christ, brothers and sisters, members of his beloved body. And may the Holy Spirit breathe life and love into your week. Amen. Amen. Friends, go in peace. See you next week when we will be worshiping God and honoring our graduating seniors. God bless you. Have a great week.